What is up? Hi, everybody. Um, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm doing shut in and listen. I just wanted to take a temporary pause because there have been a lot of things going on in the world and it felt very wrong to me to continue to go on social media when there was so many other things that needed more attention. Um, And we should not forget to give everything that is going on right now attention. So please do not forget to do that. Hi, Christian Daybreak Dark. What is up? How you doing? And thank you so much, Salil Charaya Music. That is so sweet of you. Um, I'm really excited today because not only am I back doing Shut In and Listen, but I have Lev, my really, really great friend Lev, coming on with me today. And he's just requested, so let's get him on board. But he just released his um, debut song. <laughs> Um, and thanks, Christian. I really appreciate that. Hi! Hey, Neen. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? This is so fun. Oh, this is so fun. I'm so excited that you're doing this with me. I'm so happy to be here. This is adorable. I've watched many, many of these, so it's really an honor for me. Oh, yay! Yay, yay, yay! That makes me so happy. Where are you at the moment? Did you just finish up a session? I just finished up a session. I was writing with um, my roommates. And now oh, I have love them. stolen all the studio so I can talk to you. Haha, ha, that's what we do best. <laughs> Hi, Lo. Uh, Lo's here. Hi, Lo. Hi, all the people that are joining. Oh, I love this. I love being back. I love doing this. And I'm really stoked that because I just mentioned, like, I took a little bit of a break. So I'm really stoked that you decided to come back on and you just released a single. So it all just kind of worked out. <laughs> um, did, yeah. But let's talk about a little, a little bit about you. So some people on here probably know you, but some people don't really know you. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> where, so can you give me a bit of a rundown from, about, like, where are you from? Give me, give me the start of the story. Oh, jeez. Um, I'm from a, a bunch of places. We, um, we moved around a bunch growing up. I tend to say I'm from Pittsburgh or from upstate New York. I um mm-hmm. I spent like middle school and high school in upstate New York, so that's kind of where I feel fairly connected to, and I kind of think mm-hmm. of myself as a New Yorker. But um, you think of yourself as a New Yorker? Okay, interesting. Yeah, a bit, a bit. But um, but I don't think most New Yorkers would think of me as a New Yorker. Really, what kind of sets you apart? Because I I know a lot of New Yorkers are fast paced, and then the whole move to LA thing. They're like, why would you leave New York for LA? So, what kind of sets you apart from the New Yorker? <laughs> oh my God! Well, it's just that New Yorkers are like so purist in where they come from, and like if you don't live in one of the five boroughs, you're not a New Yorker, even if you live in New York. So, right. really, like even if you live ten minutes out of outside of. Uh, outside of the city you're not a new yorker to new yorkers so they're like not nah, uh, sorry i'm done with you like yeah exactly i feel like a new yorker but i don't think anyone else would call me a new yorker but yeah no okay coming out well of you know what a huge change. yeah yeah so that was that was actually going to be my question so i mean we kind of moved to la around the same time um yeah. and i know like we were both really nervous about it because like we we were both in boston we met at berkeley for anyone that yeah. doesn't know Um, and moving to LA seems like the normal thing to do. And yeah, it's just, it's a scary move. So how did you feel moving from like moving to LA at the start? And how do you feel now? Like what's changed? It's a great question. Um, I remember when I first got here, like walking on my street, which I now know very well, but like when you first move to a place, like everything is foreign. Mm. And I remember just like walking down my street and being like, what have I done? Like, right. I don't, have, I don't have anyone. <laughs> and I didn't have, I, I still don't have a car, but I, I didn't have a car. And so like, I couldn't, it's hard to get around in LA. And yeah. it's just like, everything was new. And yeah, it's just a, it's a scary change. Mm-hmm. But like pretty quickly because of like, our circle and like our friend group and everyone it started to feel like home i think honestly within the first three months i was like sold hey on that right so <laughs> hey, um, yeah what kind of sold you on that like what what was the what was the point that you felt one comfortable in la and 
also that creativity and music started to flow because for me, when I first moved here, I was so overwhelmed. I didn't even really know what I was writing. Right. Yeah. And you, I feel like as a, as an artist and a musician and songwriter, you're trying to find your place. You're trying to find your pocket yeah. in LA um, yeah. or wherever you move to. So at what point were you like, no, I'm starting to write the songs that I really enjoy. I'm starting to, you know, collaborate with the people that work really well with me. Like how long did it take you to get there? Honestly, uh, I'm actually curious about your experience of this too, but I like, I didn't, um, I didn't think of myself as an artist. I didn't think I was an artist. Like I, mm -hmm. I, te I tended to, I, like I used to think of an artist as like a very specific kind of person. And if I didn't fit into those categories, then I wasn't one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and it took a while for me to realize that like, artistry is obviously like a personalized experience and like a very individualistic experience. And so like any experience that I have and any like way that I choose to express it is my artistry. Mm -hmm. um, so like I had songs that are gonna be coming out on the EP and including- So excited. <laughs> thanks. Like the songs that are gonna be coming out on the EP, like, a a handful of them I had before I thought of myself that way. Right. Um, and before I found like the, the group that we have here and like the group yeah. that I work with most consistently, but yeah. I didn't like have the, I didn't have like the mental infrastructure to turn that into something until I got here. There's something, I think there's something very freeing about a move to LA or like the equivalent wherever, mm -hmm. cause it was kind of like shackles were broken like I've officially committed to this so mm -hmm. hard that like there's really no turning back and it's kind of my only option. Right. So as you know scary I mean? as it was in that sense, it was kind of like you moved here, you made a commitment and now you really, you really had to dive into actually figuring out who you were. Um, do you feel like walking those streets maybe helped you a little bit like that? You know, walking the streets of LA trying to figure it all out. <laughs> Probably. Probably. No, absolutely. I mean, that was one of my questions because like, so you haven't released music in four years, right? And you just released When I Hurt You. <laughs> I'm excited. I've been blasting it, but I've also been really excited because Chris originally showed me, he's like, have you, have you heard Lev's new song? And I was like, no. I'm like no and he showed me the demo and I was like oh shit this thing's gonna be epic and it is so congratulations I'm so stoked for you if you haven't heard it please go stream his song link in bio, bio whoop um but it's been four years since you've actually released music how do you feel like as a songwriter you've changed and then also like what made you come out and, and break that shell and go, you know what, I am an artist. Like you said, there's different categories of, of things that you thought an artist had to be. Like what made you finally go, no, I am an artist. I mean, honestly, like, I wish I could say like I had like this big epiphany and that like I realized my value and all these things. But like a lot of it was just having really amazing people in my life that believed in me including mm. like our friends like the like Bendik that uh, was a big one for oh, me because sorry, I looked up out. to Bendik a lot and Bendik oh it dropped out mm -hmm. how about now no you're good now you're good okay yeah um yeah so like having friends and like people that I looked up to that believed in me I, was huge for me personally. Mm -hmm. Cause it kind of like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I don't know. I think that was such a big one for me. Did you have that experience? Yeah. Like I think support. Yeah. I mean, for me, um, artistry is a journey, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't just happen overnight. I'm still trying to figure it out. I think even, you know, unless you're Beyonce at this point, no. <laughs> um, I think it's a, it's a constant evolution because as a person, you constantly change as well. So your artistry is going to change. Um, and I think for me, you know, there are definitely doubts that you go through, whether you're like, am I supposed to do this? Am I not supposed to do yeah. this? Like, am I good enough? 
oh my God, all these other people are doing these amazing things and they're writing this type of music and why can't I do that? And there's constantly this doubt. But if you're creative and you love what you're doing and, and you're like, you're creating music. And for me, like, if you can't live without music, like you're a songwriter, you're, you're, you're an artist, like right. your love is music and art. So that is what an artist is, you know? And I don't yeah. think like, sure, there's different categories and different genres. Sure. Maybe some artists are more passionate and more flamboyant, but just because you're not wearing tons of patterns and singing crazy rock songs doesn't make you not an artist, you know? You're an artist in your own totally way. Agree. And I think at the end of the day, yeah. if you don't believe in yourself, like no one's going to believe you. Right. So if you're just wearing jeans and a t-shirt and you're singing EDM, you're an artist. Um, sure. But yeah, that's so interesting that you, you didn't really have like a defining moment. It's just kind of been like this, this constant journey. So like talking yeah. about the song yeah. then, um, I, I love this song. This song is so interesting to me because to me, this song feels like a journey. It has like so many different moments. Like it starts really soft. By the end, it's like climactic. I'm like picturing you on a stage. I'm like picturing myself <laughs> on a mountain going, wow, with these like gang vocals in the back. Um, that's why I what wrote was it the inspiration that I behind that they, I know, that's what you actually wrote it for me so that at the end of my hikes, I could be like, oh, wow. <laughs> that's exactly right. Um, <laughs> but what was like the inspiration behind the song? Because when you listen to the lyrics of, like you said, you can let me go, I'll pack my things in an hour. And then you said, you're not supposed to love me. And then you have this upbeat, like climactic energy coming through. What, what yeah. is the, run me through this whole thought, please. <laughs> I mean, like, that's a great question. Well, a few things like lyrically, um, a lot of the inspiration came from like guilt that I had with people that I loved that I felt like I was letting down. Interesting. Okay. Like whether it's like, um honestly like the first was it guilt in the sense because you were doing music or what was what was that guilt stemming from the first thing that stemmed that it came from was um feeling like i wasn't calling my grandmas enough <laughs> honestly oh wow um, that's beautiful yeah and like i i had like a certain guilt like so that's where the line like how many calls can i miss until i can't call back the whole oh, thing okay. came from like like this anxiety that I would lose them and have missed the opportunity because I didn't like, I didn't take the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And it also came from like, it came from my relationship with Haley and like feeling like there were a few moments where I messed up. I did something stupid and Haley has this had all, and continues to have this ability to forgive me and mm -hmm. to love me unconditionally regardless. And that was so mm -hmm. powerful for me because like this, that was like where the whole idea, like you're not supposed to love me when I hurt you, but you do anyway. And like, right. that's such a beautiful thing. And that's so that's beautiful. where like, that's where like the, the energy came from for me, especially because also like, I was just thinking about like how I wanted to start my career. Mm -hmm. And there was nothing more powerful to me than like starting my career with like this big, massive like screaming off of a cliff thing like this yeah. huge intro and like this massive like whatever um it's it really is I like have... a bang it's a sonic bang and it's like a, a physical bang and everything yeah. bang it's a big bang <laughs> it's a big bang of lead <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i love that <laughs> but yeah i mean like that's um i think part of it comes from like and i'm sure you can speak on this but like the like I have a tendency to make myself smaller so that mm. other people are more comfortable um, mm. and like to, yeah. to like not be fully myself or like change who I am to fit a situation. Um, mm -hmm. And so there was something again, like very freeing about, there's something very freeing about like starting it with just like this, like huge intro and like yelling and like, Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like a it's putting yourself on that pedestal and shining that that light on yourself and going I'm here yeah. listen to me I have something to say and I'm here as an yeah. artist I'm here as a person yeah I totally understand what you're saying because yeah. in your in your um you wrote a letter right 
You have a letter yes. that is also in your bio. I checked it out. It's beautiful. Um, I'm just so proud of you because I'm your friend as well. And I'm just like, oh, look at this. This is so creative and smart. But you said that you were shy and scared. So do you feel like, you know, you have put yourself in the shadows quite a bit and, and now you're proud to have your moment or are you still kind of a little bit hesitant on, on putting this yeah. out in the world? Cause I know before the song came out, you were like, oh, it's super scary, which it is. It's like birthing a child. Oh my God. But like, <laughs> um, yeah. but Australia, but how do you feel now? <laughs> I am. Um, oh, that's a great question. Yeah, I um. I was super shy as a kid. Um, I think I I still struggle with it. I don't think nearly as much as I did. Because mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think I've sort of figured out what I want and who I am, and what I stand for. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think takes everyone takes different amounts of time to do that um yeah but I never, definitely like i never planned to be 24 when my first like big song came out i mean i like that that if you told me like i didn't i didn't get this out until i was 24 i would be upset with you 10 years ago but oh i know that feeling very well i get exactly. you yeah but i think like that's so much a part of the journey and if i had I don't think I was, I don't think I would have been ready for this song four years ago. I don't think I, I don't yeah. think I was the person that I am today four years ago. And so even if I had this tune, it wouldn't be what it is. And it wouldn't, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to express it this way. And I think mm -hmm. that's a huge part of it. You know what I mean? Well, that's the interesting part. Like I, I definitely agree and full heartedly know what you mean when it's like, when you look back, because in the moment, and I feel like with music, like you, especially when you have, you know, um, oh, Haley says hi. Hi, <laughs> um, um, yeah, we you you. We were just talking about you. You missed it. He says, you're awesome. And I think so too. <laughs> Um, but yeah, when you have friends that are constantly in music and constantly putting out songs as well, and like, we're in that environment, you know? So when you see that on, on the daily, it's kind of, it can, I guess, be a little bit intimidating and you feel like you need to rush yourself and you get frustrated with yourself in the, why hasn't this, like, why isn't it my opportunity? But when you actually look back, it's kind of like, well, it wasn't, it wasn't my time and I wasn't ready for it. And that's yeah. part, that's part of that artist journey. Like now you're stronger, you're, you're much more aware of yourself. Like you have a lot of supportive people around you yeah. um, that are absolutely rooting for you. So, you know, it's, it's the time, it's the time for it. And I think that's, that's, that's such a beautiful part. <laughs> I mean, you but, must have felt this, like you literally have a song called Not Ready. Like, I mean, this is very, like, you totally understand right. what I'm saying. Oh, absolutely. I think for me, it's happened a lot. It ha it still happens. Um, I'm a very impatient person in that sense. And I get, I get very like, oh, like very tense when, you know, I'm not putting out music or something, especially in this time. It's, it can be quite difficult in the sense that usually I'm always doing something, right? Even if it wasn't releasing a song, I was doing a million different things. Yeah. And so, you know, to have like, to have a bit of a pause um, whether it's now or uh, in the in the past, and I I've definitely in the past been like, why is this happening now? And then you look back and you go, oh well, it's okay. Like I was supposed to just yeah. have a break, or I was I was just not ready for that moment. Um, yeah. Although sometimes you do need to just give yourself a little bit of a, a push and a kick and go, come on, it's fine, totally. you got this. Yeah, totally. <laughs> like but I think, buying I think a one way like... ticket to LA, you're like, sure, let's <laughs> yeah, go. Oh god. <laughs> Exactly. But I think like that kind of a push, at least for me, has come from the other people in my life. Yeah. Um, and like having people that believed in me was such a, like probably the biggest component in that regard. Absolutely. Do you think, um, do you feel like it's the people, you know, that are around now that have really made you feel solid? and like have really helped you? Cause I know, so you wrote this song with, who did you write this song with all again? Bendix, Salem, Peter. 
Yeah. Was that I, it? Well, actually, and Jay. It, it started with Peter and I. Hi, Peter. Oh, cool. Hi, it Peter. It started with Peter and I. We, um, Peter had a, a project for, for Berkeley. Mm -hmm. And oh, he asked cool. me to be the artist for the project. For, it was a production thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so we decided to do some, a session. Um, and I came in with the idea. And we got some ideas down. And I basically wrote the whole song then. And then I ended up bringing it to Jake first and then Salem and Bendick as well after that to edit some things mm -hmm. because I looked up to them as songwriters and I had just kind of become friends with them at the time. Yeah. Uh, and I thought they could help. So mm -hmm. it it's, and the, it's just been such a process, this song. Like, I think there's so many reasons that the song is perfect for me to start with. And I think one of them mm -hmm. was a, like, I have so many people that I really love as human beings that have helped on the song. Like mm -hmm. every single person that's on this record in one way or another is someone I like really love with my heart. Yeah. And th like nothing felt more fitting to me than yeah. having that as the basis because without people like that, I wouldn't be able to do any of it anyway. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. They really helped you along the way and they really like, you know that they're supportive. They're not, they're not just there for the writer's cut. Like they are there. They're part of your team. They're part of your friend circle. Like, yeah, that's, that's really beautiful. How did the song kind of, cause you started somewhere, but now you've, you've changed the song slightly and you've, you know, come to the end of the journey with this song. How do you as a writer feel like you've changed and what is like one thing that you learned writing this song? Oh God. I mean, <laughs> so many things. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I probably learned a lot. It's hard to say with songwriting because I think, I think you learn more about, I think you learn so much every time you write a song. Um, and mm. I think you learn more from others, more from some than from others. Um, mm -hmm. So I think, at, I mean, at the time, I remember writing When I Hurt You and walking home from Peter's that night and thinking like, thinking I just wrote my first good song I think that was my that oh, was my cool. thought like I, had n I yeah. my thought was like I never this is the first time I'm writing a good song um wow I thought I thought I'd written like good songs in the past but it was always like very fleeting yeah um and when I walked home from Peter's that night I was like I woke up in the morning and I listened to the demo and I was like oh my god I wrote a good song I think I even posted about it on Instagram I was like I wrote a good song wow that's awesome so you just kind of had this feeling like you just you just knew I just knew it felt it felt like the first thing I'd written that felt like very purely me it kind of encompassed Love things that. that I had never been able to do in songwriting like it mm -hmm. I grew up in like the singer songwriter and folk world Whereas mm -hmm. you, like, you grew up more in, like, R&B, right? I grew up very, like, performance, like, everything super energetic, you must be out of your seat dancing type of music. That's okay. That's right. <laughs> R&B pop, yeah. Yeah. Like, and Christina listen Aguilera to your pops. Kind of right. If you're that's not, like, if the lights are flashing, then what are you doing? But your yeah. past project was, it was quite singer song, right? Folky. Yeah, because that's, I mean, that's when I, I grew up listening to James Taylor. I mean, I grew up listening to a lot of things because of my family and because of school. And like, I just had a mm -hmm. sort of a large umbrella when mm -hmm. it came to like genres of music. Um, yeah. But like, primarily, I was listening to and performing like singer songwriter and folk music. So when I hurt you, like, but that that always felt like a limited point of view when it came to my own perspective on the writing mm -hmm. and it didn't feel like it had it like roped in all the other aspects of myself and so when I heard you was kind of the first time that I felt like I had like I had taken bits from every part of me do you know what I mean yeah no totally you kind of have that singer songwriter folky side and then you've got this new found was there was there another artist or like another genre that has really influenced this this new side of you or this new writing style i think john bellion is a fairly obvious one and yeah. uh, 
and uh, t- probably the biggest one for me. Um, and right. Musically, in a lot of ways, but also. Um, hi, Jacob. <laughs> hi, Jacob. <laughs> we both saw the ghost. Hi, Jacob. <laughs> um, yeah, no, John. I'm like, and it's it's it actually. I'm laughing when I say it because like, everyone kind of thinks is thinks of me that way as like loving John Bellion a bit too much. Um, I even have a song called well, John Bellion. Um, yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> but um, he, John, I think more than even beyond just the musical side of John Bellion's work, the way that he approaches his artistry was always really inspiring to me. Um, right. And when I was at Berkeley, I'm sure, I think a lot of people had this experience and I'm curious if you did too. But when I was at Berkeley, I kind of had this like very chilling moment where I like was suddenly not inspired to make music, was like mm. kind of not in the right headspace. And mm-hmm. I was fairly uninspired. And so to mm-hmm. come to, to like, to, to find someone like John Bellion, who shared his process so openly and was so like unbelievably passionate about what he did and did all of it was like such a push for me mm-hmm. that it like that has stuck with me more than probably anything else musically in the last 10 years. That's awesome. Is that something you, you aspire to do yourself in the sense of, like produce more yourself and kind of be a one man show. Cause you have these awesome videos on your, um, on your profile and you are doing so much on your own. So is that something you kind of aspire to? Thanks. I am. Um, well, I think yes and no. Like I love the, I've always loved the idea of it. Like I've always had this kind of like tendency to do things alone and like want to handle things alone. And mm-hmm. I love seeing someone like John Bellion do everything alone. But I also, I had a, like, I had a pretty serious learning experience finding out that I couldn't do things alone and that I needed Mm. to rely on other people. And that when Mm -hmm. I started to rely on other people musically as well, my, everything got better. Like in just about every aspect of my life. Absolutely. So. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing to um, take on that side of collaboration and critique. Like I, I, say always the two cc's because like you i i wrote alone myself as well like especially at berkeley and i think i went through the same thing at one stage where i was like i don't even uh, music uh." but (laughs) collaborating and and like it's it's nice to write on your own absolutely and i think this time has shown me that i don't know how you feel but it's definitely shown me like okay i can do this on my own and it's great to take a step back and do things on your own but when it comes to creating in the creative process to give it that extra push, like everybody needs another opinion at some point, you know? Um, And I think that's so beautiful. That's, that's the beauty in creating. And especially when you're creating with like some of the people that we create with and that you were able to create with on this song, like it's, it's just an awesome feeling to be able to do that. And it pushes you as well. It pushes your creativity and it pushes like your intelligence about things. Um, oh, and it yeah. helps you grow and it help, helps you learn, you know, because yeah. otherwise, like, if you don't create and you don't collaborate, like, how are you, how are you going to learn? You know, you can't always be right. <laughs> Not yeah, everything no, you, you do is the best way. Exactly. Yeah. I think I've learned more from co-writing. I've learned more about songwriting from co-writing than anything else. Absolutely. But I think, yeah. I still think there is a ton of value in writing alone for me. Like just Agreed. about every song on the project I wrote alone, except for John Bellion love um, that but i think like i i like a song like john belly and i really wanted to include because it was so communal like i have like it was kind of it was so fun to to. <laughs> yeah it's like it's exactly like and i have like obviously like no one's heard it yet but like you're like singing in the background and like doing all these things and chris is playing the bass and yeah jacob's yeah. singing and bendix producing and like every I wanted to involve as many people as possible because the whole idea of the song was this idea that we're talking about that like no one like is kind of like impossible. No one really knows what they're doing. No one really knows what they're doing. And like yeah. not even John Bellion knows what knows what he's doing. Right. And we're all just kind of and making it, is... it up as we go along. And we all feel yeah. we all feel like we're not good enough and we all feel these things. 
-hmm. And so like, it was so important for me, like, A is like, to like have that be part of the message of the project, but also mm -hmm. B, to like show to myself and to the world that like, I'm transitioning away from trying to do everything myself. Because I'm, yeah, I have no intention of doing like, I think there's so much value in it. And I'm gonna always have songs that are written by myself on my projects, maybe the majority still. But yeah. like, which is great. It's great. It's great. Yeah. I admire that. You know, it took me it took me a long time to feel very confident in songwriting by myself. Like COVID has been like, oh, you can do this. Um, oh, I could do yeah. better. It was like, right. I can do this. But before I was like, I can't do this. No, I think a lot. <laughs> so of I really crazy. admire that. I really admire that. That's amazing. No, I think I think that's great that because quarantine has kind of forced people to who haven't written alone to write alone. Which I think is is always a good thing. It's and, great. Um, it, even if it's shit, just write it. Yeah. The amount of pages that have just been like, blah, 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 blah. and I'm like, I want to eat popcorn right now. Oh, that could be a line. Like, <laughs> you just don't know. <laughs> yeah. But no, I really admire that, um, that, you, that you do write alone and you trust in yourself. And that is like, it's so awesome to see that you believe in the, the words and the lyrics that you're writing. And then you, you move forward and you're like, I know I need to, kind of edit this and I want to hear someone else's opinion on the song. I think that's what makes this song so great. And like John Bellion, I'm so excited for everyone to hear that. Um, I just, I had so, I remember being, for those that don't know, I was in the studio when, I think I just dropped Chris off and um, Chris was like, I'm going to go play bass. And I was like, cool, like I'm going to go hang out with the boys. And I remember you being in the studio and you guys just like, jamming on this song and I was like oh, it's so awesome and it's such a it's so nice to listen to because it's so collaborative um even Spoop just in the background talking and exactly going, yeah, like <laughs> it's just awesome it's, it's so just exciting. fantastic that's so so you've got um when I oh just a couple of comments here um I think Sophia said come to Brazil Sophia will absolutely come to <laughs> Lev will definitely come to Brazil um, and Jacob loves my New York, New York accent. Much appreciated. Um, <laughs> and hi, Bella. Um, but one question that I was going to ask you. Um, oh, it just slipped from my mind. Oh, there we go. No, that's right. So you've got When I Hurt You. That just came out. Is yeah. John Bellion the next single that's coming out or is there something else? Because I know you're working on an EP. So talk me, give me a little smidge of, in regards to the EP. I mean, I really would love to like sound cool and be secretive about it, but like I don't have management or a deal or anything, so it's really it's just like I can tell you whatever I want. But, cool. Um, I the guess more I, detail, the better. <laughs> exactly, I guess. Yeah. So, um, John Bellion's gonna be the third single. The mm -hmm. second one, which is gonna come out in a little over a month, actually maybe a month, um, is called "Always the Rain." Hey, Dad. Yes. Hey, Dad. Uh, yeah, the, the the second single is called Always the Rain, John Blaine's the third, and then the project will come out. Uh, it's looking like October. Wow, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm just excited for the world to hear it because I've been hearing it in my living room a little bit. Um, and yeah, I'm just really, really stoked for the platform that you've created and just the creativity behind the whole, like the whole EP. Like what kind of, you, you so you, like a lot of your artwork at the moment is um, with a flower and it's, it's wet. Um, what was kind of like the idea behind that? The idea was um, uh, the project is called a year underwater. Um, ah, okay. Uh, and so, and there's kind of like the idea of a year underwater is sprinkled throughout the project. Uh, like mm -hmm. the first line of, when I hurt you is it's been a year underwater and I'm the reason we've fallen. Um, mm -hmm. I, there's a title track on the project called a year underwater. And so it's kind of like a theme um, surrounding all the songs in the project. Um, mm -hmm. And so I wanted to represent that in some way without being too on the nose. Um, right. Cause I think like, if I'm just like in a pool, for all the album art, it might be a little much. This could be great. You're like, oh, I get it. I get it. I think I get what he's saying. <laughs> I um, think he's underwater. Maybe if it is a lyric video swimming underwater, then I'll understand. <laughs> then I'll get, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, so that's kind of where the idea came from. And, and Whitney, 
Whitney Audi, who's just like an incredible photographer and, and artistic visionary. I'm gonna call her a visionary. Um, Love that. She sort of helped me, the two of us sort of collaborated on the visual ideas for the project, which we're still very mm -hmm. much in the middle of. Um, but. That's exciting. That's yeah. so awesome. So I have two more questions for you. Um, one of them being as a new artist, well, you've been an artist, but like as a newfound artist, let's put it that way. Um, what could you say to someone that has been in your shoes and is doubting themselves a little bit and trying to figure it all out? Like what is like one piece of advice that you wish someone gave to you or that you would just, that you've learned and you just like someone else to know? It doesn't even have to be about being an artist, just something that you found. I mean, yeah, it's a great question. I think, um, I mean, we kind of touched on this earlier, but I, I, I think a lot of people think that they need to handle things alone mm -hmm. or maybe that they don't need to handle things alone, but that like, I sort of habitually handle things alone. It's not that, yes, I should listen to my father. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, um, I sort of do it out of habit just because I've, always done it and it's been a, like sort of a process of unlearning that um mm -hmm. but i think the biggest thing that i've found in the last however many years is <laughs> hey, is, that um, is that just talking about what's going on is mm. is like the most healing part of the process yeah. um, and every time i've bottled things up it's not gone well and every time I've expressed something it's gone well and that's why mm -hmm. I think I, like talking about being an artist like that's honestly probably why this was such a like important pursuit for me because it's like ultimate expression it's like ultimate intimacy with yourself and with others it's like how can I be as open as possible yeah I mean it's a scary thing it's you're being vulnerable. Like I always say, like your songs are, you're like, they're like your diary sometimes. Yeah. Um, and it is really scary to be vulnerable. And I think as an artist, like, sure, we can have different, you know, maybe stages of your artistry um, where one album you're super fierce um, and the next album, it's very low key acoustic, but sure. no matter what, at the end of the day, like your listeners and, and the people around you and your fans at some point, recognize like if you're not authentic um and i think it's beautiful in the sale in the sense that you are saying like it's okay to be vulnerable and let other people know if something is going on um which is is just in general if it's music or not like this is so important um yeah totally agree. but yeah absolutely as as you know as being in the music industry which is so hard in general to lean on those people that really do truly support you um and allowing yourself to be vulnerable. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. I really like that. I think there's also like a thing, and maybe it's only within certain circles within the industry, but there's a tendency to like think about songwriting as like a technical process instead of a personal process and an indi right. individual process. Definitely. Um, and, like, because we're always working on like, how can this melody be better? How can mm -hmm. this progression be better how can the lyric be better um and it was just, it took a certain like resolution in me to say like it doesn't really matter to me what this is or how good it is it matters to me that i'm saying something that i believe in and that i'm saying something mm -hmm. that i think people will connect with do you know what i mean Have mm -hmm. you yeah i mean you know when I first wrote with you, you were one of the first people that really pushed me um, as a songwriter. Um, because I remember, yeah, dead set. Like I, that's why like, it was crazy to me. It was, it, it felt so funny when you were like, you don't think you're a songwriter. And I was like, you don't think you're an artist, what? Um, so it's funny, we, I feel like we had that moment without even knowing it. But I remember being in a session with you um, and our first session was actually in Boston, but I remember like, I remember in LA, we had a session where we were writing 24 hours and I think you were like, yeah, we can, we can do better than that line. And I was like, oh, awesome. 
you know, because so many times people will just go, oh, yeah, that's good. And it's cool to do that. But at the same time, like, it wasn't that you were like, the structure's not right here or this isn't right here. It was more like, no, we can, let's explore it a bit more. Like we can do better. But I totally, and I, I just, I love that. Like that really pushed me as a songwriter and as an artist. I will never forget that moment. Oh. But it, 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 no, seriously. But I totally agree with you in the sense that uh, maybe, maybe it's because we studied so- songwriting. Maybe it's because we do it so often. Um, and sometimes you do write with people that are very structured in the sense of I need this uh, four lines and I need A, B, C, D, whatever. But people do forget that sometimes it, it can just be a sound and it's just, it, it should be a feeling. Like, can someone else feel it? Like someone that isn't maybe wrapped in music can it like they feel what you're actually singing and saying. Yeah. And I think we do get very lost in that structure, um, of songwriting and lyric writing and melody and it needs to be this certain way and we need to have like eight lines in a chorus but you don't you you really don't um so it is interesting that like you have recognized that as well um and it's it's freeing once you get to that point that's that's at least how i feel like it's very freeing when you get to a point where you're like oh i don't need to do all this stuff like yeah. How do I feel? <laughs> it, yeah. it, it's also like, it serves the song. Some song, songs are like that. Some songs are not like that. I think at the end of the day, it really is about the song. Totally agree. Totally agree with all the above. It's also, um, yeah, yeah, I forgot what I was going to say, but it's, it's, it's just lovely hearing you talk about that. Cause I, that's, I think we're like, so like, I tend to think I'm self-aware and then like someone <laughs> tells me like that I affected them in some way or that especially someone like you who's affected me in a lot of ways. Oh, um, see, I don't know. <laughs> see, exactly. Like, none of us know what we're doing. No, none of us know what we're doing because it's just so interesting because yeah, like I know, I know we both probably have a lot of doubt, you know? And I think for me, people don't see that because I am like quite a strong person. Well, I'm getting all vulnerable in my life. What is up? Um, but no, I mean, I think that is such a big part of it. And truth be told, like you really are one of the writers that I wrote with. And at first I was shitting my pants. Are you kidding me? In Boston, I was like, I'm running with love and Marvin. I'm so scared. Are you really? Um, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because, like, you're so good at your craft, you know, and me coming from a performance background was very, like, I don't know if what I write is good or not good. Um, but then it was so beautiful to see what we had written in Boston kind of was so... We both were like, mm, that wasn't that great when we both got to LA and then you push yourself to, you know, do better and find something yeah, much more interesting. There's always another song. It's always another song. Yeah, it's another song. Exactly. But you know, never is... forget how amazing you are. Legit. <laughs> I would say the exact same thing to you, Nina. Also, this is so fun because I feel like we never get to talk. Like, talk. Like obviously, we, usually when we're hanging out, we're just like fucking around and like doing random things. But Being like, silly billies. Really, we never really like I know, it's... talk about this stuff. And I think it's really interesting and really fun. I think so too. And thank you so much for coming on. You rock my world. But it is like... I don't know. I, I think it's interesting because like I have so much respect for you as a songwriter, as an artist, and it's just beautiful to have seen you blossom. Um, and I remember in, when you first came to LA and you were like, I remember we both got, we walked to Starbucks and I, I confessed to you out of nowhere. I was like, I feel so lost right now. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I and I think you, you were like, yeah, I'm kind of going through the same thing. And that was, that was so awesome. And then to hear John Bellion, I was like, yeah, I think we're all just kind of going through the same thing. And it's like, it's important to recognize that. And it's important to have those moments so that when you have like those highs and you kind of, you figure it out, you're like, okay, again, back to the same, the thing of yeah. like, I just wasn't ready yet. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think like it reminds me of like the whole, you know, you know, the saying, um, like the job of the artist is to, disturb the comfort the comfortable and comfort the disturbed i haven't heard that but i love that that's brilliant i love that that um i love that as well and i think um i think like at the moment my job as an artist is to comfort the disturbed and i Mm. am 
excited to get to the point where I can disturb the comfortable as well. I think it's like very much a duality in it. Um, and I think, do you, I, do you feel like that because of the time right now or in what way do you feel that way? I mean, like, yeah, like, of course, like there's tons of, um, there's, there's things that I think, um, many artists are, uh, hesitant to express musically. Cause mm -hmm. I think it's hard to talk about something like, like, something like Black Lives Matter, um, mm. expressing like that sort of sentiment musically, I think is really difficult for people, Definitely. myself included. Um, yeah. But I think if we can get to a point where we can not only talk about it, but also like affect it culturally, mm. at least I think for me, that's really important. I don't know if I'm there yet at the moment. I just like well, yeah. Just yeah. learning and talking about it. But I think- um, Agreed. I think that's a huge goal. I like, I think, like, it's the reason I look up to like someone like Kendrick Lamar or like Nina Simone or like these people, because they found a way of expressing that kind of frustration and real, like, very real experience of the world musically. And I, I just think that's so much more difficult than people realize. It is really difficult. Um, and I think it's rather difficult in these times, especially being an upcoming artist, um, not even just musically, but on social media as well. Like you do have to be quite careful in what you're saying, um, especially with canceled culture at the moment, which is quite heavy. Um, yeah. And so as an upcoming artist, like you do have to be careful, but it is really important to not be tone deaf to the situation and recognize like, I think music is, is a wonderful thing in that sense because it allows us to recognize so much that happened in history, right? Music has, whether art has been destroyed or music at some point has been banned, like there are songs, um, like someone did just write Strange Fruit by Nina Simone. But that was, that's your dad, that's your dad. Um, Nina Simone is, is huge um, in, you know, recognizing what was in history, Kendrick Lamar as well. Um, God, there's so many artists, but I think that is the beautiful part. As you said, it's, it's disturbing the comfortable. Um, and I feel the same way. I haven't quite gotten there, uh, because I feel like I'm still learning as well, especially being new to this country. Like I'm still learning a lot, um, whether oh, yeah, it's about sure. the past or the present, um, which is quite interesting. Um, but as an artist at the same time, I don't feel like right now, what I want to be putting out is. I'm super happy, you know? So it's interesting writing in that sense during this time and what should I be putting out and what should I actually be saying and how as a, a white artist can I be expressing what I'm feeling right now as well. Um, and so I agree with you in that sense. I don't know if I'm quite there. I haven't actually found the lyrics or the words to quite say it yet, um, but it's definitely something that I want to explore and say, get to as well yeah it's like uh it's also like um like i found it sometimes it's a matter of like is my voice really needed in this mm, lane at the moment because that's also like something that's um sort of hard to navigate um mm. but i found like sometimes it's better to like I it's I think sometimes it's important to know when to just mm -hmm. support something as opposed mm -hmm. to being like this is my opinion about everything ever you know what I mean yeah absolutely yeah sometimes you don't need to have a megaphone sometimes you just need to support and stand with and um sure I always say raise your voice but you don't need to be blasting your megaphone if there are other people who are much more educated and and know but that's also a personal opinion. So I don't really know. <laughs> no, I agree with you in that sense. It's, I think it's such an interesting um, thing to navigate as an artist. It's like a, yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting. It's this tough. Is. It's definitely tough. We went through a different, we've gone through so many rabbit holes. I love it. <laughs> so all we've done is rabbit holes. It's all, so many rabbit rabbits. Holes. I'm growing ears. Oh my God. Isn't he tough? <laughs> um, 
But I did say I had one more question. Yes. Um, I had a question from Jacob earlier, and yes. he said, how do you keep your hair so curly? That's you got to answer up, that one on your own. No, yeah, no. I wake up every morning at 3.45 a.m. Oh, and I, good. I go to the bathroom, and I sit there twirling it for about, about really? three hours straight. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So then at 6.45, you're like, I'm done. I'm tired. It's time for like, my hair's curly Some and breakfast. I go water my plants. You go water your plants? Awesome. All right. Well, let's make sure that we tell Jacob. And also, I think this could be a really great opportunity for you to, you know, get on board with like Garnier hair or something. Be like, takes me three hours. Give me yes. some product to you guys. <laughs> please. This is, I, I, I'll do as much product placement as you guys want. Whatever you want. Oh my God. Please let that be your next video when you get up at 3.45 a.m. And you just put the timestamp there. <laughs> and by the end of the three minutes of the song, you're like, time for my breakfast <laughs> <laughs> my dad just said smh i love that he said smh that's awesome larry you're a champ um all right one more question before yes. i let you go um give me two artists or albums that everyone needs to listen to right now or that have you've just been playing on repeat um i would say everyone has to listen to i would say Blue by Joni Mitchell. And mm, I say, okay. And uh, uh, I'd say Glory Sound Prep by John Bellion. I'd say do those two. I love that you just put that in there. That's awesome. And I'm actually going to go do that now. So thank you very much. <laughs> I am too. This is a great. I, I asked that question for everyone else, but I'm also like, I need new music. Can you just let me know? <laughs> <laughs> have you even noticed? You've listened to this album, right? Yes, I have. It's that he's just, I just, I have no words because you, you said it all perfectly before, but he's just an absolute genius. I saw him live as well. Where'd you see him I live? just can't. Well. In Boston at the Pavilion. Nice. I actually ran into Spoof and Adam there and before Spoof became my roommate and I was like, see you in LA. That uh, makes a ton of sense because I think the only people who might be bigger John Bellion fans than I am is Spoof and Adam. Yeah, I remember having a session with Adam and he just had like John Bellion posters everywhere. And I was like, do you like John Bellion or something? Like, <laughs> I don't know, can't tell. Um, but hey, thank you so much for Thanks, being Nita. on here. I love this you so lovely. much. I'm so excited for you. Everyone that doesn't know Lev, now you know Lev. Um, he's the most wonderful human being on this earth. And he I'm just released sure his song. You, yeah. Okay. You stop, you stop. I was stop, um, I was stop at you. Um, but When I Hurt You is out now, so it's out everywhere, right? And then all we have to do is just go yeah, to the everywhere. link in your bio. Yeah, link in my bio. It's a link tree, so you can also, you can... Love that. You can stream the song. You can go to my website. You can go to uh, an interview I did with the line of Best Fit, which is a blog in the UK, and all sorts of mm. things. It's very fun. Awesome. I'm so excited. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on and enjoy the rest of your night. And thank you, Nina. You too. I hope we can see each other sooner than later. <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> but love you so much. Love you. Thanks for this. Bye. <laughs> Well, thank you to everybody that streamed with me and Lev um, and just streamed in general. Thank you for hopping on and listening to the first Shut In and Listen. Um, as I said, I am doing these again because I just love being on here and chatting with you guys and chatting to new artists. Um, it's really important that we support each other. Uh, not only as artists in this time, but support each other in general. So please make sure if you haven't done it today, text one of your friends and say, hello, what is up thinking about you? Um, and just make sure that they're feeling loved. But thank you to Lev and thank you to everyone that streamed with us. You can check out his song in his bio. Um, and yeah, I'm off to check out the sunset maybe. All right. Have a good one, guys. <laughs>